So in this clip we show how to drain subretinal fluid. A curved artery clip is used to visualize where the subretinal fluid is deepest by indenting posterior to the buckle and observing with an indirect ophthalmoscope. The tip of the curved artery clip should be visible internally with pressure and uh, the location of the drain should be the point where the subretinal fluid is nice and deep. We can mark on the outside of the eye on the sclera where the subretinal fluid is deep and then the needle prang drain is performed with a 5 ethabond needle. About a third of the needle is uh, outside of the needle holder and that third is then introduced through the sclera in one movement. All the time the eye also has to be pressed on and grasped firmly with a St. Martin's forceps near the muscle insertion ideally and pressure applied to the eye as soon as the needle comes out and this reduces the chance of internal choroidal bleeding or subretinal bleeding. As the subretinal fluid is draining away it can be observed with an indirect ophthalmoscope and it's ideal to continue pressing for three to four minutes in order to prevent uh, further bleeding or any bleeding occurring in the choroid. It should be checked before releasing the pressure whether any bleeding has occurred. Now we're also showing here how a gas injection can be given into the eye via the pars planar and a 30 gauge needle. Uh, the tip of the needle is visualized with an indirect ophthalmoscope and when it's seen inside the eye uh, the needle should be pointing posteriorly not towards the lens and a single movement made to inject a single large bubble. Ideally the injection point should be the highest point of the eye so that the bubble will form downwards from the needle.